Live from the Hilton at Bonnet Creek, Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Vision 2015. Brought to you by IBM. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to the Cube, everybody. Welcome back to Vision 2015. I'm Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Dr. Susara Vanden Hever is here. She runs product management for the decision optimization part of IBM. Susara, welcome to the Cube. It's great to see you. Thank you. So let's talk about uh, decision optimization. Let's start there. Where does it fit in the IBM portfolio? People, I mean, a lot of people know about Cognos and the other products. Watson Analytics now coming in. Wh where is the decision optimization product fit? What is it? Sure. So decision optimization actually quite recently became part of the analytics team. And so we're very happy that we're finally in our home where we belong. And so if you think of really the main three parts of, um, of analytics, so you have the descriptive, which tells you what's going on in your business today, and that's really things like Cognos. Then you have your predictive, which tells you what's going to happen in your business tomorrow or in the future, and that is really the SPSS. And then where we are, we're really that next step of true competitive advantage, so that's what, once you know what's going on, what's going to happen in the future, what you need to do about it. So we're really that act part, plan, schedule, uh, decide what you're going to do. So you're the action part of the, we're the, uh, part of the portfolio. <laughs> yeah. I like that, okay. And so yeah. how are organizations using uh, decision optimization today? So it's really used cross industry, um, completely industry independent. It's a lot used for planning decisions, uh, scheduling, um, any kind of combinatorial decision where you have a very large number of options you need to consider. And so what we find is instead of say something like simulation where you might w need to run thousands or millions of options, optimization really takes that whole problem in one go and it will just come and suggest to you one or more uh, best solutions in terms of making plans, making schedules. So the software essentially helps me execute on my plan, right? So I, get, I, opt, I, I make a decision, I, I manage that decision, and you say you predict, and then you say, okay, we're going to go. Um, so talk more specifically about what the software does specifically. Um, does it help me get more efficient? Does mm -hmm. it help me just track what I'm doing? Um, is it nagware, making sure that people are following up on their promises? Talk a little bit more about that. Right, so I'll go, I'll use an example to talk right. about that. So if you think of, of something like sales and operations planning, you probably have some business goal that you try to achieve. So you might want to think about you want to maximize your revenues, or you want to maximize your customer service, maybe improve your customer service levels, or you want to minimize your production costs or your storage costs. So all those business goals go into our optimization problems. So that's really the first thing is you need to achieve those business goals. And then you know you have some levers in your business you can pull. So you can produce more of a certain product, less of another one. Um, you might want to be able to change your, your stock levels. And those are the decisions that we would recommend. If you want to maximize your profit, um, if you want to focus on customer service, this is what you need to do in terms of uh, changing your product composition, changing your pr production plans, and then all that within your business constraints. So we capture that reality of what's actually pos possible in reality. Um, and that becomes your business constraint. So. How do these products fit with the, uh, the rest of the portfolio? Because I can see different parts you know, doing different things. Are they tightly integrated, loosely integrated? Maybe mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's actually, it goes across the range. There are some product offerings in IBM that we are very tightly integrated with. For example, Maximo uses us, Algorithmics, Unica, um, even SPSS Modeler. We're inside SPSS Modeler. Then there are other products where there might be a, a slightly looser integration. It might be on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you think of the IOC, a lot of the smarter cities functionality would use decision optimization inside. And it might be based on a particular user, for example, the, the water network planning. That's actually an optimization application that started in IBM Research and uh, got integrated into the IOC product. So that's a little bit looser. And then we also go way the other end of the spectrum, doing completely custom integrations. 
So there might be a client that wants a particular set of IBM products together and we can integrate with those. So we have a wide range of APIs, um, we cover different languages and we basically integrate with anything. And you have some announcements at this event, right? Can we That's talk about right. those? That's Tell us right. what, what you're launching here. Yeah, so this week we're actually announcing decision optimization on cloud. So we're taking these decision optimization um, mathematical solvers They've been around for about 25 years. They're the market leading solvers for decision optimization used across the world and we've now made them available or we are making them available on cloud. The announcement is this week. It's available in beta. Um, you can go to ibm.biz slash try do cloud to access it and um, it will GA end of the month. What was that URL? I IBM? ibm.biz slash try do cloud. Try do cloud. Yeah. Okay, and then I go there I get a little little trial. Yeah, Tri we have a freemium model. That's right. We have a free trial. Now the the um, this product is really targeting our current customer base. So we're really targeting operations research professionals and developers. And those are the people who would be building these applications that can then be integrated with any other um, visual platform, whether it's Cognos right. or TM1 or whatever the case may be. So how does the how does the cloud change the game for you in terms of go to market, delivery, everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's really two main parts that we see there. The first thing is that optimization, which might have traditionally been a, a little bit of an expensive area to go in for the mid-market because of the cost of the licenses or maybe the cost of the servers you need for the really computationally intensive problems. Um, so that's the one problem we address with cloud. So of course, once you go to cloud, that whole cost problem goes away for the mid-market. You can pay per hour. You can access um, powerful solvers when you need them. If you have a really difficult problem that you need to solve, if you think of retail over Christmas time, they're incredibly busy. So then they have these huge problems they need to solve. In the past, they would have to have their own servers. Now it just goes to cloud. They use it for that month. That's it. That's all they pay for. If you need it for an hour, you pay for an hour. So that's the one thing. On the other side, we have the ease of use. So we believe that putting decision optimization on cloud is really going to change the business landscape. Where in the, fa in the past, it was really um, a lot of focus on experts, people with PhDs. We believe this is going to overcome that. And so as a proof of concept, concept for that, we've gone and created a um, tie-in to Watson Analytics, a proof of concept, not a product. I have to emphasize it's not a product. Uh, we cannot sell it, but I will talk about it more this afternoon and uh, just showing how we can bring optimization to that line of business environment to have people work with optimization but in that context that they love to work with, that very visual, very interactive context. You mentioned uh, developers is one of the, the targets. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Uh, so this is, is this r uh, I presume it's running on software. And That's right. The Bluemix aspect of this. Is that the yeah. developer that you're going after? Maybe talk some yeah. about that. Yeah, so the job of the developer, so we actually, we have these two personas. There's the operations research expert. That's the guy who creates these models. And he might want to solve these on cloud. So for him, we created a drag and drop interface, which means if he wants to solve his model on cloud, he takes it from his desktop, he drags it over to our website, done. That's it. So some of our competitors require scripts that you need to write or implement, none of that, drag and drop. And then his colleague is the IT developer, and sh her job is usually to take his model or application and integrate it into a larger enterprise-wide application. And so for her, we have what we call the Do Cloud API. It's a REST API, significance being you can use it with any language. So if she's a Java user, she uses that. If she uses Python, she uses that, doesn't matter. And basically for her, it's about five lines of code to integrate our cloud solver with her application. And so we have all the samples online. She can go and download the samples. We have our developer community. And it's just really simplifying that process. Right. But you've also written extensively about how all these new technologies, the social, the cloud, um, visual tools, are enabling you know, much better penetration into line of business That's right. folks that aren't yeah. necessarily the people that are building these, these optimization models. Can you speak yeah. to that and really some of the great things that are happening because of that access to more regular uh, kind of line of business folks. Yeah, so that's really where we see the role of Watson Analytics and some of the other solutions from IBM, but especially Watson Analytics, because what we're going to do there is, in the past, where you might need a very particular model 
for a very particular business. We're now saying instead, let's just take that 80% model, which is generic, we put that inside and we let the user actually interact with the system, interact through that Watson Analytics environment to configure it. So in the past where maybe you needed for, for 10 solutions, you needed 10 experts. Now you're gonna need one and you're gonna have the, the business users interact with it and configure it. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, if we take this example, go back to your example of the operations research person and the IT developer, and your example, you talk about him as the operations researcher. So this is, I, we would consider him a, a low code or even no code developer, right? He's going to be dragging and dropping That's and right. creating function and business function and, and mapping to a business process with a drag and drop. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it truly that simple, right? So, Yeah, so he's really, he, he's writing his models with the language he uses, but ultimately to make that solve on cloud, he doesn't have to do anything. In the past, he would have had to write some code to make that happen, but he doesn't have to do that. He just drags it over right. and it's done. Okay, and then if I want um, some greater customization, I go to mm -hmm. the IT developer, and right. she's wearing a hoodie, or? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Where's so the hoodie? Yeah. She's got a hoodie going on. And okay, so she has access to what the, what the tool sets within Bluemix, you know, uh, is that right? Yeah, exactly. So you can imagine that if you wanted to create an app that also includes optimization. Now you have, you could have that service created in Bluemix. You can combine it, um, pick and choose other, op other services, whether it's a visualization service, a scoring service, so we know that there's um, in beta a scoring on cloud from SPSS. And so you can combine and mix and match these things and then you can create your own application and that's actually one of our other um, target personas is the analytics entrepreneur. So people who really have some knowledge across the board, they know some predictive, they know some optimization, but we make these services available to them much easier to consume and, and string together to build applications. So one of the things that everybody talks about is this notion of self-service, people trying to create a, you know, an Amazon-like experience or a, you know, Uber-like experience. So what are organizations doing to create that self-service you know, model and, and how is IBM helping them? So in terms of self-service, well, um, Analytic self-service is really a lot about taking that middleman, that, that uh, uh, IBM support actually, out of the picture. So for example, if you want to go and buy our offering today, well, at the end of the month when it's available, you just go online, you, add, you put in your credit card and, and you buy it. There's no more complex process, so we take all that out of the picture. So that's in terms of the buy, but then in terms of the use, the everyday use, um, there's really that aspect of going to something like Bluemix, where there's really, it's almost as though it's a community of, um, of developers, of contributors, and they work together. You use your own stuff, you use other people's stuff, and that's really the third aspect, is the community aspect to it. So it's, um, creating the self-serves in terms of much less reliant on support calls, uh, filing tickets, really an active community of people contributing and providing support within that community as well. And you had indicated, Cesar, that the, your, the initial target is the existing customer base. That's right. right. And, and so, um, what do you expect for the cloud uptake there? You sort of in indicated there's a surge, you know, example, mm -hmm. like during, you know, the holiday season, people yeah. might, you know, go to the cloud for, for additional capacity. Um, it, it, are you seeing that in sort of large organizations? Uh, is that mostly mid-sized organizations going to the cloud? Is it sort of mixed? Yeah, there's a bit of a mix. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, we see very large corporations who are moving everything to cloud, all their operations, and they want to say, we want to move our optimization to cloud as well. So they're our existing customers, and they want to, um, just move to cloud, that's part of their corporate strategy. Then we have other customers who might be very happy with their on-prem, but they have the seasonality aspect. So that could be, for example, in retail. Um, another example is very large um, sports affiliations. So they do their sports scheduling. Very lumpy. Yeah, <laughs> so they, a lot of them use our software for sports scheduling. And so at certain times of the year, they need to run a lot of problems really fast and they, get the, they need to get those solutions really fast. And so they would go to the type of bare metal offering we have where you get the really, um, really powerful bare metal servers on SoftLayer and you know you're guaranteed when you submit your problems, it's going to be solving instantly. 
Now for companies who are not so worried about it has to be instant, um, there's that virtual machine pool. So there you share with other users and uh, you know, sometimes you might have a little bit of a wait, but sometimes most of the time uh, it, it's just gonna solve. But if you really want that guaranteed um, immediate result, it's gonna be the bare metal. And then, so those are the larger corporations. Then you have um, the more middle size is really what we see through our business partners. Right. And they're the, what we call the analytics entrepreneurs. Some of them are actually people from our team who've gone and created their own businesses. And so they are analytics experts and they are creating um, cloud-based applications for their customers. And so they are the people, they don't want to go and charge their customers a license a full license just if they use the application a little bit. Right. And so that's really that more middle size. And so they're essentially now. reselling your offering, uh, adding some value to it perhaps. That's uh, right. Do they, they, they private label it or is it, an, is it an IBM product to the customer? What is the customer? No, that would be their own offering. So they yeah. would create a custom solution oh, okay. for a, for so a particular they can, they customer. Can, they can private label, white label that. And, and then how do you price this? Is it per seat, you know, per month kind of thing? Yeah, so we have three different pricing layers. So the first one is pay as you go per hour. And basically at the end of the month, you'll be billed based on what you've been using. Then the second one is a, um, what we call a uh, committed use, committed hours. And all that means is that you need to sign up for a minimum of three months. And the more hours you sign up for, the less you're going to pay. So that's right. just to get that commitment. And then the third one is really the bare metal. Option. So the bare metal also has a three month minimum commitment. It is a lot more costly, but then you get this really dedicated experience of you have this very powerful bare metal machine, you have it when you need it, and that's really for the heavy users of optimization. And are you, are, you, is, are there such things as ELA in this, in this world, or, or not necessarily because, uh, you know, enterprise license agreements, or, or is it, not so much because not yeah. everybody in the organization is going to use it. What's going on there with enterprise um, Yeah, so, so we've done a lot of that with our on-prem software, actually. Yeah. We do a lot of ELA. And so um, as we go forward, we, we need to see how that's going to work. We have often that customers would want to use a mix so that they might want to keep using what they have on-prem and then they would add to that some of the cloud functionality some okay. of the cloud solve. So we're out of time, but last question is, we talk to our audience and you know, the, the folks out there that are candidates for this, this product, you know, what do you want, what's the message you want to leave with them? What should they be thinking about in terms of, uh, of th this new product, uh, the whole notion of decision optimization? What would you tell mm -hmm. them? Well, first of all, if they don't know what decision optimization is, and if they're at, the, at this conference, please come to our um, demo pit. We're at number 46 or contact me directly. We found that a lot of people at Vision have not yet been exposed to decision optimization because we just joined analytics. We're incredibly powerful, um, very powerful technique. It's been around since World War II when the US military used it to plan military operations. So we're proven, huge ROI. Um, if you're not looking at us, if you're not talking to us, you're really missing out on what you can do in terms of competitive advantage. So. That's what I would say. That's straightforward. <laughs> well, Sarah, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations on the product announcement, and thank uh, good you. luck going forward, and happy right. to see you're in the right place in the organization. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah all right. Well, thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Jeff Frick and I will be back right after this word from IBM Vision. Go to ibmvisiongo.com, check out our digital experience. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>